is Home Games. That is Bubba O'Neill from CHCH TV Sports. Rick Zamperin in the red from 900 CHML. Steve Milton from the Hamilton Spectator. I'm Scott Radley from the Hamilton Spectator and 900 CHML Radio. And this week we learned that the, well, we learned from a report anyway, that the CFL has been denied an interest-free loan from the federal government looking for some money. Reports were, Rick, that last year they lost between 60 and 80 million. The same report from Canadian Press says they were looking for something in the $20 million range for an interest-free loan and apparently got a no. Assuming the reporting is correct, Rick, what does this mean? Does this mean now that the CFL that the XFL, I should say, is now the warm landing spot and the CFL has to run and land it, launch itself into the warm bosom of the XFL? I don't think necessarily so. It might accelerate the panic level that is amongst the CFL higher-ups to say, well, maybe this is you know, an opportunity that we, sh- we should spend a little more time on or, or, as I said, accelerate those kind of discussions and whatever this new entity would look like. But, you know, being a, a CFL diehard and a, and a purist, I want to delay those talks as long as possible. You know, the CFL has been around for decades. The XFL, this is their third go round now. You know, they've had in the last 20 years, two startups and two you know, major failures. I understand the financial situation. It's, it's not easy. And, you know, for the ownership group and the league itself to lose upwards of 60, 80 million last year and potentially looking at, you know, a similar number this year if it doesn't go ahead. Um, I think they hold out hope that come the fall when millions more Canadians are, you know, fingers crossed vaccinated, that they can have some fans in the stands, but still the economics are are not going to be in the league's favor. Uh, I I think these, you know, CFL dash XFL talks are going to accelerate. I don't see any merger announcement anytime soon. I think they they were already going to accelerate. And I think we should point out right away, uh, I think, uh, and by the time this airs, I'm not sure if it'll be confirmed, but this is a, this is a true report uh, because it comes out of Canadian press who have people inside the government, right? It's not just us sports guys uh, looking at this kind of thing. So uh, um, my understanding from people inside the league is they were never counting on this, Uh, that at least not the owners. They may have been at the, at the at the employee level or at the at the commissioner's level, but they were never really counting on it. Secondly, um, is there an is there an emphasis on interest free here? Right? Is that is doesn't mean it, no loan. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is there an emphasis on that? Thirdly, um, I think I don't think it changes the XFL thing. It might move up a couple of things. In, in points of emphasis, uh, and one of which could even be the, the number one thing they were looking at at the first place, which is marketing and branding, is that it might, uh, you know, accelerate that. It has to move some things a bit quicker. It does probably bring some definitive things if this was, you know, hey, I think a lot of owners were looking at this. If we get some money, it's kind of a bonus. Mm. And remembering they already were getting some money, uh, at least indirectly, uh, because it went to the players. And I think once free agency started, and that would have been, what, February 15th, my understanding is that some or all of that, of course, doesn't apply now because they don't work for the teams anymore. Look, at the end of the day, and I'll maintain this, I've said this from the very beginning, whether it's 2022 or 2023, the CFM, the XFL, it's real. It's happening. So, uh, I think everyone should just just get used to that. But in well, terms happy. of what you're looking for in 2021, uh, I think at the end of the day, the owners right now, if they don't get their through, which obviously they're not going to get this interest uh, loan of, I believe it's $30 million. Uh, at the end of the day, it's put up or shut up for this league that have uh, corporate ownership, community ownership, and individual ownership like we have in Hamilton with Bob Young. If you want to play games because of, look at the situation of the pandemic right now, you cannot – play games with fans in the stands, you know, whether it's 10%, 20%, regardless, it's not going to happen. But if this league want to get off close to being on time, it's going to have to play games without fans. So no $30 million. That means everyone's got to dig deep into their pockets, like the national hockey league, have, like the NBA and major league baseball have. So it's either put up or shut up and play the season pretty close to when it was supposed to start. And you got to dig deep. And, you know, because we keep hearing we can't go two years without, you know, without a league. So and the owners right now uh, are in a situation that do they really want to play or do they want to sit and wait? I'll tell you one thing that uh, and it changes the, the discussion a little bit here, but I'll tell you one thing I was a little surprised by with this when I heard this report. 
we know that we've got a federal budget coming out in the next few days. And we know from all kinds of reports and leaks that the federal government has said that it's going to be spending $100 billion or so on stimulus. And with that amount of money that's being spent, 20 million or 30 million is really small potatoes. I mean, it's not small potatoes in real world, but when you're spending a hundred billion to get the economy going and get the country going and whatever, I was shocked that the CFL would not find a way to get a loan of that size, considering how much money is being spent. And it tells me one of two things, either Randy Ambrosi is just not good at negotiating and talking to people in government, or this is a very clear political sign of the CFL's where it's successful, which is the West, which is where the federal government has no people and no votes. And if the CFL's strength was in Toronto and Montreal, this loan would have happened. I absolutely believe that. But I believe that you look and you go, why are, why do we need to be spending money to win votes where we can't win votes? Well, I don't know that that's the case because they, what, what decides the elections in this country? Quebec, right? You, you win Quebec and you're conservatives, you are the government. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're well, keep that. Ontario and Quebec. Yeah, yeah you, for sure. But 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 I mean, Quebec is a really a swing type thing. Right. So. So, in fact, when the conservatives did win a majority, it was because of their a lot of times. And, you know, I mean, there's other pockets as well. Uh, but and and counter to your argument, Scott, and, and you know, I, I think it's a fair argument. But but I think counter to that is that uh, the the, uh, the government also is, is going after hard after the gas, you know, to support the gas industry and, and policies. They they actually uh, theoretically don't believe in. But because because of the, the economy in the West and, and, and that kind of thing. But uh, there could be other things in that budget uh, that won't be directed to the CFL, but the CFL could fall under it. It, it, the, the, you, you're right about Quebec and the GTA, the 416, the 905 is key for a federal election. You're telling me that if the Toronto Maple Leaf said we're teetering and we need an interest-free loan or the Montreal Canadiens or the Jays or the Raptors, you're telling me you think that they wouldn't have got it? Absolutely 1,000 million Maybe. percent they would have got it. But there's I, no I, interest in the Argos and there's not that much interest right now in the Alouettes. Well, yeah, the, only thing, survival, but... the only thing that jumps out at me is... You know, I think governments are really hesitant to give sports, franchises, leagues, any kind of handout, bailout, loan, whatever you want to call it, any kind of funding, knowing that, yes, there is some economic impact you know, around these sports. When they're in bubbles or when there's no fans in the stands, the economic impact, as we know, is pretty null and void because, you know, you can't go out to bars with buddies to watch the games. You're not spending money, you're not spending money on marking, you're not buying tickets or merchandise, really, you know, not as much. But look at the Air Canada situation. You know, they got $6 billion, but a lot of that money is going to people, going to families, going to individuals who, you know, had vouchers instead of refunds because their uh, airline tickets got basically, you know, ripped up and, and torn to shreds. I think, you know, giving back in a, in a, a way that helps people uh, is what the government is more interested in. And I think, especially with no fans in the stands, uh, they're really hesitant to do that. I think to suggest that this uh, is some type of posturing by the Liberal Party uh, because they don't get votes out West is ridiculous, Scott. At the end of the day, this isn't a regular time. And when this budget comes out, the, 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 the focus must be on people, not sports teams, not sports franchises that forever, for as long as we've been, each one of us have been covering this league, there have been financial issues with this league, whether it be a couple of teams, one team, or the entire league. Right. You and you're looking for an interest free loan. If, put it this way. The way I look at it is each one of the four of us can walk into a bank. Right. And look for a loan. We have to have good credit. Right. And if you don't have good credit, you don't get the loan. The CFL don't have good credit as it stands. Right. I think we can all admit to that because mm -hmm. they're always looking for a handout, at least for as long as I've been following this league. And at the end of the day, if the business if you don't run the business correctly, you don't get the spoils, right? We're coming in, we're coming into, or at least in the middle of a pandemic right now. And whatever millions of dollars go to whoever, it's not the football franchises. We have already learned right now, guys, from this time exactly last year, that the world goes on even without sports. See, Bubba, I don't, uh, to, just to clarify one thing, I'm not saying it's posturing by the liberals. I'm saying that they look around the country and they see where votes are and there are no votes where the CFL is popular for them. 
And so, and, and once again, like I am a fiscal conservative to the nth degree. As far as I'm concerned, the hundred billion dollars the government is going to be spending when the budget comes out is probably 95 billion too much for stimulus because everyone, every economist says the country, the economy is going to spring to life as soon as we can get out of COVID because everyone's got this wrapped up money they haven't spent. So I'm not, I, it sounds like I'm saying, I'm not saying we should be spending more and more money. What I'm but, saying but is if we're going to be hosing, fire hosing hundred billion dollars everywhere, $20 billion for a business, which is what the CFL is, seems like small potatoes. Well, yeah, here's you, the deal. It's, not, it's, a, it's not small potato. You suggested the Maple Leafs and the thing, but the Maple Leafs and the and the Habs and the Raptors. Those are businesses that run as a business and are successful businesses and make money and have proven to be successful businesses. Where and when, especially in the last 20 to 30 years, has the CFL never proven never that it's a good substantial business? And the government aren't fools, they're not silly. They know what's going on with the XFL, right? That, that it's coming or something's coming along the line. So why do I want to give you a $30 million boost where I already know that maybe in a year a year from now, you won't need it because you'll be owned by some very wealthy people. And Steve, I'm going to let you jump in for a sec, but I'll just say one more thing to that and then I'll move on. And that is governments all through COVID have been giving grants and loans to cultural institutions that don't function as good businesses, art galleries and and other things that don't make profit, but they've been giving them because it's culturally significant, which I that's think a, you can argue the CFL is. That Well, and, and that that's the point I've been making for close to 40 years, is that the CFL has not done a very good job. They only call on it when they need it, and they only call on it during Grey Cup Week. has not done a very good job about identifying to itself and to everyone else exactly what it is. It is above a league and above a business, and it has to be both of those. Bub, you're 100 percent right on the business side, and that's that's what the current group in the last 10 years, ownership group, 14 years, has been after is that establishing the business side. And I've advised them many times, and of course they don't listen. Why would they? Um, you're only a hall of fame. Not just a business. Make it a business, but understand what you sell. You sell some part of cultural ism that you this your number one sales thing is culture and they've done it with slogans and that kind of thing you know you know our balls are bigger all of that kind of stuff but you haven't done a big enough job so you if you're if you're going to do what scott says the other cultural institution you've got to show that and prove that uh the other thing is my de- i doubt that uh the leafs and the canadians and therefore some of the owners in the cfl would ever go for a loan because you have to open your books Fair enough. rick put a ball on this yeah, I think we can all agree that the CFL business model, at least financially, is broken. It's got to be fixed. What the answer is, whether it's lower player salaries, and I know I'm going to get you know some hate tweets there, or you know reconstructed salary cap, or whatever the case is, not enough money is coming in. Because if enough money was coming in, they'd have a war tra- a chest or a treasure chest to dip into in times like this. Great discussion, guys. What do you people think at home? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Is this political? Should the government be giving a loan to the CFL as a cultural institution or as a struggling business? Or is Baba absolutely right? They have shown no ability to operate as a business. So why would you put good money after bad? Let us know. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell down below so you're aware when these videos come out. They come out often. We'd love for you to miss none. We'll talk to you soon.